Dear intercessors in the Nordic countries or wherever you are, the theme for my message this week is the consuming, purifying fire of the Spirit. And I'm going to talk from uh, Ezekiel chapter 1. I just want to begin by saying that this is the chapter that became the background to the uh, um, prophetic message that came forth through a man called Rolf Wieström 70 years ago about the Nordic countries. And I'm going to read that prophecy first uh, before I begin to speak on uh, Ezekiel chapter 1. So this is what he wrote in his book, God's Plan for the Nordic Countries in 1952. Over the Nordic countries lies a shining cloud of God's power. God calls people today to become channels for this power. God places the responsibility on us for the post-Christian countries of Europe. We have the cross in our flags. God wants us to experience the power of the cross in our lives and pass it on to Europe's longing millions. And then he ends the prophecy by saying this, Christianity or Christendom will again experience the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit. New great multitudes of obedient servants shall again go forth where the Spirit leads, and the plan of God shall be fulfilled with haste. Uh, So let me read now from Ezekiel chapter 1, and specifically verse 4, that is the foundation for this message that uh, came forth through this man. It says, As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire, as it were, gleaming metal. It's interesting that even in the, uh, in the creation that God has ordained, there is something called the northern lights, or the northern light. Uh, there is a special phenomenon that is seen in the skies uh, the further north you come. So even though this is, of course, spoken primarily about Israel, this uh, chapter here in Ezekiel, it is also something that the Spirit of the Lord uh, quickened to this brother as a a prophetic word for the Nordic countries. And this has been confirmed. Uh, First of all, God spoke to me when he called me in 1977 with a similar message. And then in 2006, uh, the uh, Norwegian intercessor Gunnar Brudeli had a similar vision of a mighty work of God that will start in the Nordic countries and spread down over Europe. And uh, many, many others have had similar um, revelations. So that is the foundation of the prayer movement that we have called Nordic 714, to pray for this promised revival, this mighty uh, work of God that is going to start in the north of Europe, in the northern countries, and spread down over Europe back to Jerusalem. Now, this chapter here... Uh, in Ezekiel, uh, the first chapter in Ezekiel, is a chapter that is being read in every synagogue around the world on the Feast of Shavuot, what we call Pentecost. And of course, in Christian, um, in Christendom, in the church, we read Acts chapter 2. And I'm going to begin to read those verses in Acts chapter 2 because it's all about Uh, the fire of God as well. And uh, we start here in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Compare the similarity when it says a stormy wind from the north in Ezekiel chapter 1. So there came from heaven the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
and dividing, divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then we have the explanation of this, what happened uh, from verse uh, 16. It is the message here that the Apostle Peter uh, gives to those who had come uh, assembled to find out what was going on. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy." And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this was fulfilled the first time on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago uh, here in Jerusalem. However, we see the prophecy in Joel is connected to the coming of the great day of the Lord when uh, uh, Yeshua the Messiah shall return to judge the world. So we can apply this promise or we can um, expect uh, that this promise of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to uh, happen again in the end times just prior to the coming of Messiah. And that is what we're talking about here, specifically the way it is going to be fulfilled from the north, coming down over Europe back to Jerusalem. So uh, it's talking about really the the refining fire of God's Spirit. It's a a, um, great cloud with raging fire. And it says, and brightness was all around it, radiating out of the midst, like the color of amber, and out of the midst of the fire. So I want us to read here from Malachi, what it says uh, in the Malachi uh, chapter 3 uh, about this, this uh, cleansing uh, fire that is going to come also among God's people in the end times. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. This is, you know, uh, Acts chapter 2. And suddenly there was the sound as of a mighty rushing wind. God, when he comes, he is coming suddenly. It's going to be a quick work. But it has to be prepared uh, 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 through prayer. It's only through prayer that we're going to see the fulfillment of this promise for the end time. Suddenly came, <clears throat> will suddenly come to his temple, I read on here in Malachi, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings in righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years." Then I will draw near to you for judgment. So this is what we're going to um, experience in the end times. There's going to come a refining fire among God's people. And it says here, who can endure that day of his coming to cleanse his people? God is going to have a, a church, an assembly, a bride that has been purified by fire Uh, to meet the Lord when he comes. And it's that church that we are praying for in these end times. It is something that we must never give up hope 
uh, for to see this come to pass. It's going to come suddenly in answer to prayer. I also want to read uh, about this cleansing, purifying fire in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. According to the grace of God given to me, that's Paul writing, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care of how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Yeshua the Messiah. Now, if anyone builds on that foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest. For the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. So everything in the church that is wood, hay, and the stubble or straw is going to be consumed by the purifying fire of the Spirit in the end times. And it's going to come, this purification, this cleansing in the fire of the Holy Spirit is going to start among God's people in the north. Let me say also that the chapter here in Ezekiel, chapter 1, if we go to the final verse, which is verse uh, 28, it says... Uh, at the end of that verse, such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So this chapter is describing the the nature of the glory of God. We are praying, many are praying for the glory of God to, to fall. Well, when the glory of God falls, it is going to be a very uh, severe refining work of the Spirit where uh, everything that is of the flesh is going to have to uh, be consumed on the, on the altar, on the fire of the altar. So let's look at verse uh, 4 again. As I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, and a great cloud with brightness around it, and fire flashing forth continually, and in the midst of the fire, as it were, gleaming metal. So that metal is going to be the purified metal that has gone through fire. Um, Yeshua, the Messiah, he is admonishing the church or the assembly at Laodicea. Let's read about that in the book of Revelation chapter 3, where he says... um, and I counsel, in verse 18, Revelation 3.18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich. Gold refined by fire, that is a faith that has been tested in much affliction through fire. Let me tell you, there is going to come such a test to uh, uh, upon the whole earth in the end times that prayer is going to be a matter of survival. We are not going to make it without casting ourselves upon the Lord and just crying out to Him with all our might for His uh, strength, for His power to endure this um, and, and for repentance to be purified so that we can go through this test of fire. Let's read on here now in chapter 1 of Ezekiel in verse 5. And from the midst of it, that's the fire, came the likeness of four living creatures. Uh, And this was their appearance. They had a human likeness. It's going, we read on also in verse 13 and 14 about these creatures that had the likeness of human beings. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches moving to and fro among the living creatures. And the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, and the living creatures darted to and fro like the appearance of a flash of lightning. So what this is... um, Part of what we are seeing in this passage here, in these three verses, 
is that God is going to raise up these ministers of fire in the end times. They are going to be like blazing, uh, like burning coals of fire and like torches that is going to be raised up by God, uh, ministers of fire. That's what we're praying for and what is described here in verse 5 and 13 and, and 14. So in verse 6, we see something uh, else here. It says, uh, but each had four faces and each of them had four wings. This is further on described in verse 10, where it says, as for the likeness of their faces, each had a human face. The four had the face of a lion on the right side. The four had the face of an ox on the left side. And the four had the face of an eagle. Um, Theologians have described the four Gospels uh, in the likeness of these four living creatures, where the Gospel of Luke, we see the the presentation of the Messiah as the Son of Man. He It, it is in his um, humanity that he is pre- pre- presented primarily in the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Matthew presents him as the the king, the lion of the tribe of Judah. His royalty is described in, in the Gospel of Matthew. In Mark, he is uh, portrayed as the faithful servant like an ox that is faithful to do the heavy work of God. And then finally, in the Gospel of John, we see him uh, in the image of an eagle, the prophetic, the, the soaring high in the spirit with, with the uh, prophetic utterances. Uh, of God on his uh, lips. So all of these four Gospels, they present to us the full picture of the Messiah in his first coming. And we see that these uh, living creatures, they're going to have faces uh, that are similar to the uh, the description of the Messiah in the four Gospels. In other words, they are going to be ministering in together in the fullness of Messiah. I want us to go to Ephesians chapter 4 and see verse 13 here, where it says, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Messiah. Wow. That is what we are to pray for, ministers of the gospel that is going to be able to demonstrate the full maturity of Messiah in the, in the end times. Hallelujah. Now, turning back to Ezekiel, let's go to verse 7. It says, Their legs were straight, and the soles of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot and they sparkled like burning bronze. Let me just comment on the feet, where it says that their feet, or, or, or their legs, it says. Their legs were straight. This is talking about being uh, standing strong in the Lord without being um, shaken by anything. In Ephesians 6 and verse 13, It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. These are not going to give in to the pressures of man. They are going to stand firm in the evil day in the full armor of God. And as it says also in verse 10 in Ephesians 6, that to be filled, uh, strengthened by the power of God. Uh, of God. Uh, Let's look at that phrase there in English in uh, Ephesians chapter 6. I want to read it here uh, from verse 10. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. 
So therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. So these straight legs, it speaks about this uh, ability of these ministers that we're going to pray for that will never give in to uh, to the uh, pressures from the enemy or from the world or from people. They are going to stand firm uh, in the strength of God. It says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12, Therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. But these people, they are going to be able to stand firm. And in Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12 and 13, Therefore lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. All right, so these people are standing with their legs straight. They are not giving in. Uh, and then it says about their feet that they were like a, a calf's foot uh, and it's sparkling like burnished bronze. Bronze in the scriptures uh, is a picture of atonement. So these ministers uh, that are going to be raised up in the end times, and that's what we are praying for. Hallelujah. An army of God that is going to be raised up. Hallelujah. I'm so excited about it. They are going to be ministers of reconciliation, bringing uh, atonement to people. Let's read Second Corinthians 5, verse 18 to 20. All this is from God who through Messiah reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Messiah, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Messiah, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Messiah, be reconciled to God. These ministers of the gospel are going to pre uh, proclaim uh, the ministry of reconciliation. Let's go back to Ezekiel 1 and let's read verse 8. Uh, <clears throat> Under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands. And the four had their faces and their wings thus. So they had human hands. Uh, in other words, this is speaking about their humanity to be uh, servants, to, to serve with their, with their hands. I want to read Philippians 2, verse 7 and 8. About the Messiah, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So he became uh, like a human. He became like a man. And he came as a servant. It says, he said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew twenty twenty eight. And in the book of Acts, we read about the apostles that it says in verse 12, Acts 5, 12. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles. So we long to see these ministers who are... Uh, faithfully serving uh, in humility uh, the, the suffering of humanity. All right, let's read on verse 9 and 11. Their wings touched one another. Each one of them went straight forward without turning as they went. As for the likeness of their faces, each had a human face. We've already read about the four faces. Verse 11, such were their faces and their wings were spread out above. Each creature had two wings, each of which touched the wing of another, while two covered their bodies. So here we see in verse 9 that the wings touched one another. And in verse 11, again, once again, each of which touched the wing of another. They are going to stand, they are going to be together, united in this fire. This chapter, as I said, is a 
picture of the glory of God. And Yeshua prayed in the, the prayer, um, high priestly prayer as we call it, in uh, John chapter 17, that uh, he has given us his glory that we shall be one. Let's see. I want to read that verse. In verse 22, The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Let me say that it's only in the glory and the consuming presence of the fire of the Holy Spirit that we truly can become one. But these living creatures in the form of human beings, uh, picturing to us ministers of the gospel, servants of the Lord, their wings are touching one another. They are not independent. They are standing together in perfect unity. That's what it's a picture of. But it says also at the end of verse 11 here that the other two wings that they had, they touched each other with two of the wings, and then with the two other wings, they were covering their bodies. This speaks to me of perfect unity through humility. They do not draw attention to themselves. They cover themselves with two of the wings. This is uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Uh, Paul writes, Therefore, as a prisoner, uh, I read from verse 1 actually, as a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So this unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace is based on humility and of gentleness. Their wings were not just touching one another, they were also covering their bodies. Hallelujah. But they were joined to one another. And that's what's going to happen before the glory can be fully manifest. Or in the glory that is going to be revealed, there is going to be no flesh that is going to uh, take glory for himself. Uh, so it has to be, there is, that is where we will see the complete unity. Verse 12, let's read. And they went straight forward. Wherever the Spirit would go, they went without turning as they went. So it says here they went straight forward. They are going to not deviate to the re uh, left or to the right. They are going to walk straight on the straight path of God. So it's so important that we do not compromise with anything in the Word of God. We're, we don't try to bend it here or bend it there. We're walking straight ahead. And that's what these ministers are going to be doing. They're going to walk straight ahead. And of course, they're going to go wherever the Spirit is wanting them to go. Just like uh, Rolf Wiestrom prophesied in that book from 1952, the, the new great multitudes of obedient servants shall again go forth wherever the Spirit leads. It is also described about this in verse 20, uh, where it says, wherever the Spirit wanted to go, they went. And the wheels rose along with them, for the Spirit of the living creatures was in the, in the wheels. Uh, so when verse 21 when those went these went and when those stood these stood and when those ro rose from the earth the wheels rose along with them for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels so wherever the spirit l guided uh, them they were led they, that's where they went they were guided by the holy spirit so we're not going to be guided by human wisdom by uh, our own intellect, by our own planning and what, our own striving, it is going to be fully controlled and guided by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then verse 18, something interesting. We, we read here first from verse five, 15, actually. Now, as I looked at the living creatures... I saw a wheel on the earth beside the living creatures or underneath them, one for each of the four of them. 
As for the appearance of the wheels, let me just say here about the wheels. It is uh, Ophanaim in Hebrew, and actually that's one of the names of uh, a um, type of archangels, just like Seraphim and and uh, Cherubim, Kruvim, are other types of archangels. So this Ophanaim wheels, it's a type of angel, archangel. As for the appearance of the wheels and their construction, their appearance was like the gleaming of beryl. And the four had the same likeness, their appearance and construction, being as it were a wheel within a wheel. Once again, perfect unity here. When they went, they went in an, uh, any of their uh, four directions without turning as they went. And now it comes in verse 18. And their rims were tall and awesome, and the rims of all four were full of eyes all around. So here we see it's living creatures, it's uh, angelic forces. Uh, it's not physical wheels, but it, they are described as, as wheels. And they have eyes all around the rims of these, these wheels. What is this talking about? They're going to have... Uh, they have such a complete revelation and wisdom by the Spirit. They are going to know uh, nothing is going to be uh, hidden from them. They are going to see everything. They are going to be able to, those who are led by them, are going to be able to penetrate into the deepest uh, parts of, of the heart of people. Hallelujah. Verse 24 and 25. This is so powerful. And when they went, I heard the sound of their wings, like the sound of many waters, like the sound of the Almighty, a sound of tumult, like the sound of an army. When they stood still, they let down their wings, and there came a voice from above the expanse over their heads. When they stood still, they let down their wings. Of course, this sound of many waters, like the sound of the Almighty, this is the sound of the voice of God. We find this expressed several times in the book of Revelation. Friends, the voice of the Lord is going to be heard in our nations once again. It is going to thunder. Like it says in in um, uh, Psalm 29, let's read about the voice of God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read the whole psalm. So powerful. A psalm of David. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Yes, Holiness will be required in the army of the Lord. And then it comes here from verse 3. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. Hallelujah. The Lord over many waters. This is the voice that is going to be heard through these messengers, through these instruments, uh, these servants of fire, ministering spirits that are going to be sent uh, forth in the end times. Servants of the Lord, the voice over many waters. Waters is a picture of, of uh, peoples and nations. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Everything that is proud, that's what cedars are a picture of. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. Oh, how we long for this, to have the, the voice of the Lord come with fire and to be heard in our lands again. The voices of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. Well, the glory is going to be revealed through the ministry of the word of God when the voice of God is going to be heard in the land. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. 
That is going to come about through the voice of God being heard again in the land when the minister of the word is going to go forth from these uh, servants that we are praying for to be raised up by God. Hallelujah. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 29, it says, O land, 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 hear the word of the Lord. How we long for the word of God to be thundering over our nations once again in the end times. Hallelujah. Finally, in verse 26 here in Ezekiel, uh, towards the end here of the chapter, we read in verse 26, so powerful and mighty. And above the expanse over their heads, there was like the likeness of a throne. Hallelujah. God is going to be enthroned on uh, and revealed as Lord and as King through the ministry of the servants of God. The likeness of a throne in appearance like sapphire and seated above the likeness of a throne was a likeness with human appearance. And upward from what uh, had the appearance of his waist, I saw, as it were, gleaming metal, like the appearance of fire enclosed all around. And downward from what had the appearance of his waist, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and there was brightness around them. Hallelujah. I am uh, uh, reminded here of uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 11, about the two witnesses in the end times it says uh, and <clears throat> in verse 5 and if anyone would harm them fire pours from their mouth and consume their force fools their enemies in other words if anyone would harm them this is how he is doomed to be killed so the fire of god is the going to come forth through these ministers that are, that are going to be raised up in the end times hallelujah so they, they god is going to be uh enthroned upon this revelation of god's glory in the church among his people and and yeshua is going to co have complete control over his church once again hallelujah uh, in the book of Acts, the first verse, I want to point out something. It says, I quote, In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Yeshua began to do and teach. So the book of Acts is describing how Yeshua the Messiah continues to act and to teach through his apostles. And the book of Acts is still being written. It, 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 he is still continuing to do and act through his ministers also in these end times. But it's going to be a complete maturity of this ministry in the end times when the glory of God has consumed all that is of flesh, all that is of sin in the church, then he is going to be revealed as king and as Lord reigning over his people. And he's going to continue to act and to teach through his ministers. Hallelujah. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5 and 6, For we proclaim, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Yeshua the Messiah as Lord, with ourselves as firm servants for Yeshua's sake. Let me read that again. For what we proclaim is not ourselves. People are not going to try to promote themselves in the end times, in the end time revival, is, uh, is what I'm specifically talking about here. But instead, but we are going to proclaim Yeshua the Messiah as Lord seated on his throne and ourselves as servants as your servants servants to the people for yeshua's sake friends um this is what has been prophesied 
in this word of God. This is the uh, vision that this man, Rolf Wieström, saw 70 years ago and wrote down in that book, God's Plan for the Nordic Countries. It is still waiting for its fulfillment through our prayer, through our intercession. God is going to do this mighty work to hasten the coming of the Son of Man in power and glory. We do not give up. We do not... uh, Uh, get tired or weary or discouraged we will continue this ministry and we will see it being manifest before our eyes in the end times if we do not give up it is going to come it can be delayed but sooner or later it's going to come let us pray that it will be sooner rather than later the refining fire of the holy spirit is going to fall in the church to consume wood, hay and straw, everything that is of the flesh, everything that is of man. And God is going to have a pure bride with servants that will be like ministers of fire. And that's what we are praying for. Hallelujah. Let's end in prayer here. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, description of the glory of God. And we believe that you are going to pour out of your spirit in the end times to accomplish your mighty work. Father, I pray for the strength of every intercessor in Yeshua's mighty name. Father, I pray that they will be strengthened by might in their inner man to labor before you in intercessory prayer, to give themselves to the ministry of intercession in order for us to see the fulfillment of what you have spoken. Thank you that you are faithful. We give you all the glory in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. If you were touched by this message, you can help us to spread it on the internet uh, by clicking on the thumbs up. You can also uh, send it send the link to your friends and remember the prayer topics that we list under the video every week the hour is late but god is faithful and he hear our prayer he hears our prayers god bless you shalom